Hey everyone, I'm Sammy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm working on a dining room set. I'll be taking you through step by step on how I transformed this into this. A friend came to me with this dining set that had definitely seen some better days, but I always love a good challenge and boy did this set need some love. Before getting into the refinishing process, I wanted to know what I was working with. Taking a closer look, this table has been well loved over the years. Some areas where the stain is coming off, lots of dirt and grime, and these chairs weren't in the best shape. I knew with a little elbow grease this table can be revived to see many more years to come. So first things first, fixing any loose parts. I noticed that the legs weren't secured very well onto the tabletop, so I gave those a quick tighten and they were good as new. Now we're jumping right into the most important step and that is cleaning. I put on some gloves, grabbed my tried and true all-purpose cleaner and scraper and rag and got to it scraping off all the gunk stuck on, making sure I'm getting every inch. Using this scraper makes it really easy to get off the large chunks and I'm able to wipe off the rest with my rag. I thought it would make the whole process easier if I removed the base from the legs. There were only a few screws to undo and then it slid right off. This made it much easier to clean the underside of the table and ensure I'm not leaving any grime behind. I gave the top of the table a good wipe down to prep it for sanding and moved on to the legs. I removed the middle leaf insert and I have never seen a leaf insert that was connected to a table like this one, but I thought it was pretty cool and a smart way to store the leaf. This little thing had lots of stains and gunk on it, including some red pen scribbles and what felt like to be old syrup, but nothing I can't handle. I scrubbed the base very well with the same cleaner and scraper. Some areas were harder to get to, so I got out a soft bristle scrubbing brush to get the detailed areas. Moving on to the chairs, I knew these were going to be a challenge. There were lots of built-in detailed areas, so I started scrubbing with a sponge and quickly realized this was going to take me hours, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, but it was definitely worth a shot if it was going to cut down my time. I got out my pressure washer and got to work. I was absolutely amazed at how easy and quick it made this process, and I might be using this a lot more for cleaning furniture. 
You want to make sure when using a pressure washer that you're working with hard wood and that your pressure washer isn't too strong. I have a 1900 PSI Ryobi pressure washer and I absolutely love it. We have done our fence, the driveway, you can use it on your house exterior, and so many other things. I definitely recommend one if you don't have one and this could be a great gift for that DIYer in your life. If you're interested in the one I'm using, I will put a link for it down in the description. Next step, we are onto sanding. I'm going to be painting everything but the tabletop, so I went in with a 220 grit sandpaper to give it a light scuff sand. My friend wasn't sure what she wanted at first, but really liked the dark colors and thought it would match well in her home. We decided on painting the base and the chairs black and going with a deep espresso stain for the top. I moved on to the chairs with that same 220 grit sandpaper lightly going over everything, making sure to get the seat very well because these are surfaces that are going to be used often and I want the paint to adhere as best it can. Once everything was sanded, I got out my spraying tarp and blew the dust off using my air compressor. We don't want any dust particles in our paint. I laid everything out on the tarp and began priming. I'm using the 123 Zinzer primer in the gray color because I'm going to be painting it a darker color. This primer is going to ensure I get a good bond so I don't have to worry about paint chipping. These are going to be well used products so ensuring that the paint is going to stick for many years is my goal. Whenever I'm using spray cans, I use the trigger attachment and it makes it so much easier to hold and my finger never gets tired. While the primer was drying, I worked on sanding the tabletops, removing all the old stain and finish. I started off with a 160 grit and worked my way up gradually to a 220 grit. And there was already quite a few areas where the finish was missing, so this came off very easily for me. Now it was time to paint the base and the chairs. As always, I'm using my paint sprayer. It makes painting speedy and flawless. And I absolutely love this black color. This is actually Bear's just black color is what it's called. It's in a satin finish. And this black was so rich and pigmented, I was able to get it all covered in just one coat. I let the paint dry overnight and started the next day by finishing the sanding process on the tabletops, moving on to the higher grits. Sanding can be a bit monotonous at times, but I think it is quite therapeutic when you see the different layers of the finish come off and then you finish it off with a smooth 220 grit. I blew off the dust with my air compressor and wiped the surface down to collect any residual dust and now it was time for stain. Mm -hmm. 
I decided to go in first with a dark walnut because I liked the warmth it radiates. Using a lint-free rag and some gloves, I applied a layer of stain over the entire surface. The stain wasn't dark enough for the desired look, so once the first layer was dry, I went in with a deep espresso stain and it was the perfect shade. While the stain was drying, I gave the chairs a light sand before sealing them. My go-to is always polyurethane in a satin finish, and something I like to do when painting with a dark color is to leave a little bit of the paint in my sprayer, or I just don't clean it out if there's no paint left, and I mix in that polyurethane with it. And what this is going to do is give you a streakless finish. I went in and gave everything one thorough coat with this mixture, and it was good to go. I had yet to stain the leaf, so I quickly did that using the same two stains as I did before, going in with the walnut first, letting it dry, and then finishing it with that dark espresso. I'm using a wipe-on poly to seal the stained surface. This is going to give it more protection against stains and scratches than a polyurethane top coat would. Again, making sure to use a lint-free rag that can be thrown away after use. An important step when disposing of these items is allowing the gloves and the rag you used to apply the stain time to dry as they can randomly combust if they're thrown away wet. Lastly, I got it all inside and started assembling the table. First, I secured the brackets onto the leaf and then attached it to the base. Here, I made sure it was put in properly and the leaf was working as it should. Then I slid both sides of the table on and screwed them together from the underside. Once again, I made sure everything worked well together and it was time to stage. For this piece, I'm keeping it simple for staging, less is more, and I think this one can speak for itself. I am so happy with the color scheme we went with on this piece, and I am glad to say that it should have many more years of use. Let's just say my friend was more than happy with the outcome of this dining set. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you've really enjoyed it. This was a fun makeover for sure. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are and I will catch you guys in the next video.